Welcome to the Claudia Coffee Academy. We're here today to learn the essential skills necessary to make quality drinks and to help your espresso bar set a consistent standard for how your drinks will be made. Over the last four years, the Kaladi Coffee Academy has focused on the best ways to make espresso training simple and effective. We've trained hundreds of espresso entrepreneurs and their employees at our weekly courses. In this tape, we'll talk about the four basic drinks, the raw materials of quality coffee, essential barista skills, and we'll look for a moment at customer service. The raw materials for espresso drink making are simple. Coffee, water, good equipment, and a few bar accessories. And we'll discuss each of these as we go on. The first of the raw materials is coffee. Make sure that you have a good espresso blend from a roaster that you trust and know. Do they buy good greens? Is it well roasted? Is it fresh? So remember, the better the coffee that you start out with, the better the espresso you can have as an end product. Water is 90% of espresso. So you need to make sure your water supply is very good. Free of rust, free of chlorine, free of any other taste that might taint your espresso. So if you suspect the, the quality of your water at all, make sure that you install a high grade water filtration system. A good grinder is essential to uh, making a good espresso. When you only have two elements going through the machine, water and coffee, the grind of the coffee becomes extremely important. This is your bean hopper. This is your adjusting collar. This is your doser compartment and doser lever. This is your on-off switch. And finally, you have your portafilter yoke, which holds the portafilter for you when you dispense coffee. Additional hardware is, of course, your espresso machine. It's almost secondary in importance after the grinder because the grinder is what you adjust all the time. The espresso machine should be, uh, have a large tank capacity, have good thermic balance, and be backed up by excellent service. The espresso machine shown is a two-group automatic La Marzocco. Your machine is probably similar. It has two groups or brewing heads, which hold two portafilters or brewing handles. It has an automatic keypad programmed to stop your shots at the correct volume. Semi-automatic dispense switches located below allow you to start and stop your shots manually. Also note, steam wands and knobs, gauges, hot water dispense switch, and drip tray. For steaming milk, you'll need several pitchers. Every pitcher should be equipped with a thermometer. Thermometers help you to accurately gauge milk temperature. A stopwatch and a shot glass or measuring cup are absolutely essential to making consistently perfect shots of espresso. At Kaladi Brothers, we keep them on our bars at all times. Grind changes throughout the day, and it is important to always check and adjust your grind. We'll talk more about how to do this next. Espresso differs from brewed coffee in that it is much more chemically complex. An espresso is at once three things. It's a solution, a suspension, and an emulsion. The solution part of the espresso is very similar to black coffee, but much more concentrated. The suspension is very interesting. Tiny, tiny particles of coffee, as well as a lot of the gases from a fresh coffee bean are combined in the brew to give you a wonderful aroma and much more body than you would get with a normal coffee. And finally, the crema layer actually holds in a lot of the flavors and the aromatics. A properly prepared espresso is a beautiful thing. We hear a lot of talk in the trade about shots of espresso or pulling shots. A shot of espresso is simply, to us, seven grams of coffee or about a quarter ounce of coffee combined with one ounce of water. These are called brewing handles or portafilters. The one in front is set up for a single. The one in back is set up to dispense double shots. This portafilter has a single spout on it and a single basket. This portafilter 
has the deeper double basket and a double spout on it. This spout is shaped this way so that it will split the espresso flow into two single shots if need be. What becomes extremely important in brewing the espresso is getting the proper extraction time. There are three things that affect extraction time. First is the grind, the second is the dosage of coffee into the portafilter, and the third is your tamp. We will talk about these one at a time. First, we will talk about how to dose coffee. There are two ways. Regardless of which method you choose, your dose must be consistent every time. The first method is the doser compartment method. If you are starting with an empty doser compartment, as you would when adjusting the grind, fill the back half of your doser compartment. Pull the doser lever twice to position the coffee in your doser compartment. Good. You may then dose the coffee into your portafilter. The next method is the fill and scrape method. In this method, you grind your coffee for each shot as you dose it. Pull the handle until the portafilter is over full. The excess is scraped back into the doser compartment. For a consistent dose, always be sure to overfill and scrape. The next thing you will do after dispensing the coffee is to tamp it. It's very important that the tamp be done correctly. Tamp should be level. It should be hard, applying between 30 to 70 pounds of pressure. There should be a good twist to the coffee to polish the surface. Any loose coffee can be knocked down by hitting the edges of the portafilter and again packing the coffee. Notice how it's tightly packed, level, and almost has a shine to the surface. Portafilter may be inserted usually by rotating the handle clockwise, letting the cogs or the ears on the portafilter go up inside the machine, and then it is pulled tightly. It's important not to either let it be too loose or too tight. If you pull the portafilter handle too tight, you wear your gaskets out prematurely. As it's brewing, it's easy to see the three different parts of an espresso. Developing just now along the bottom, you see the solution element of it. The second layer, the suspension, is tiny gas bubbles that are working their way up to the crema and emulsion, or the fats and oils on the top. If the combination of your grind, your dose, and your tamp are all correct, you should extract a shot of espresso between about 20 to 30 seconds. Perfect. As you can see, the middle layer will disappear after just a few moments and it settles out. One of the great things about espresso is that the crema actually holds in a lot of the flavors and the aromatics. Generally, you'll know you're doing it right if you see all three of those layers. If the extraction time of your shots are two to three seconds too fast, or too slow, you can correct this by changing your tamp. A harder tamp will slow your extraction time. A lighter tamp will speed your extraction time up. If your